All right, guys, so we have quite the task ahead of us. Prisoner of Azkaban, my absolute favorite book and movie in the Harry Potter series. I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this one, so I hope not to disappoint you. The Marauders are some of the best characters in the Harry Potter lore, and since we see very little of their lives in the films, there's been a ton of fan casting. Because of this, I'm sure people will get upset with my decisions. You likely have a clear answer in your head. I'm not saying my decision is better than yours, it's just the way I picture the character. That being said, I know the internet has spoken, and pretty much agreed on a cast for the Marauders, at least three of them, and they are perfect choices if they were cast in the younger roles for these characters. But in my opinion, they don't really match the older version, who have a lot more life experience and are a lot more complex. They would have been perfect if it was 2007 and there's a prequel series about the Marauders at Hogwarts. But that being said, let's recast Harry Potter in The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now it's important we have consistency across the series. Although the films in the original series cast much older actors than what was required, they remained consistent. So we've already cast Adam Driver as Severus Snape, meaning our Marauders and Lily should remain around the same age. Driver being 36 years old is perfect, still youthful and translates the belief that they died too young, but not so young that we can't buy into them being in a role of authority. So we're looking for actors and actresses roughly in their 30s. As I said in the last video, let's start with the defense against the dark arts first. This time, it's filled by Remus Lupin. In the books, he's described as still quite young, but his condition has taken a toll on him, so he looks rather tired and a little bit ill. He has a little gray in his light brown hair and is quite tall, standing about 6'2". Because of Remus's condition, I feel like casting a slightly older actor than Driver is appropriate to give him the illusion of the years and how they haven't really been kind to it. Also, Remus's soft, comforting nature is tremendously important. Harry relies on him for training, but more importantly, guidance. Lupin is actually my favorite character from the entire series, so I think it's tremendously important that someone nails portraying him. And I don't think there's anyone more perfect than Tom Hiddleston. He's really the only name I considered for the role. First off, the physical description is spot on. Although Tom Hiddleston is very handsome, can be made to look more ill and those lines on his face can be amplified and he's actually exactly 6'2 just like Lupin. Although he portrayed Loki, he can portray very calm and warm. His nature in real life is more welcoming and he's gathered quite a following of fans because of it. But more important, Hiddleston has made it very clear through his career that his talent is world class. He has the chops to play almost anyone on screen and I could definitely see him as Remus Lupin. So for Remus Lupin, Tom Hiddleston. Next up, we'll tackle Sirius Black, the man who spent 12 years of it in Azkaban. He's the one I struggled with most when casting, because this role has to be a lot of things. First off, we need to see that arrogant playfulness that is prevalent in the younger side of the character, but we need to see him aged and the effect that Azkaban had on his shoulders, all while being warm to Harry and really providing a father figure to him. There's a lot of things to do. Now, there are many avenues I could take with casting this role, but I kept on coming back to the energy of the character. There's actors out there that look exactly like Sirius Black in my mind, but I don't know if they have what it takes to portray him on screen. I'd rather trust an actor rather than just casting a face that looks right. And yes, I know that the internet has decided on a choice and it's been that way for a while. Ben Barnes, who in my opinion, would be a great younger Sirius Black. But for me, not one who has left Azkaban and needs to translate 12 years of pain. And although Ben Barnes is almost 40 years old, in my mind, he's still a little too boyish and too young looking to play the role. He doesn't match up with Adam Driver or Tom Hiddleston. His face doesn't really have that weathered look that 12 years in Azkaban would cause. That's why I went with Luke Evans. He could help translate those 12 years of pain and the way to put on him. And also with Evans being a little bit older than Hiddleston or Driver, we can see those 12 years on his face and the physical wear it put on his body. Most importantly, I actually think he has the range. Although he isn't always in the best movies, he's the best part of them. I feel like he can play every side of the character, unlike other actors I consider for the role. And now the detective is asking if you and I are in a relationship? I would never even get near someone like you! I can see him recklessly dueling next to Harry, calling him James. And I can see him with an arm around Harry, talking about if he wants to come live with him. He's a great actor who deserves more time on screen and really just better roles. So, Luke Evans for Sirius Black. 
As for the last living marauder, Peter Pettigrew, I think it's important that the character has the qualities of someone who is swayed by power. Although I love Timothy Spall's performance in the movies, I didn't once buy that these characters were ever friends before the reveal. Peter Pettigrew is weak-minded, but it's important we translate that he only does things for self-preservation. I mean, he spent 12 years as Scabbers. Obviously, that would have effect on your psyche and translate into his human form in some extent, but I feel like the movies might have gone a touch too far. He is described as fat in his youth, but after the reveal of him becoming human again and the realization he was Scabbers, he has said that he looks like he lost a lot of weight. Peter Pettigrew is a specific type of energy, but I feel like Paul Dano has portrayed a similar energy on screen many times. If you've ever seen There Will Be Blood or Prisoners, you've seen the perfect actor for Wormtail. I am, I am in desperate times. I know. I need a friend. Yes, of course you do. I understand. He is Wormtail in all his pity. So Paul Dano for Peter Pettigrew. Now for Lily and James Potter, Harry's parents. First off, I think it's a wonderful idea to cast Daniel Radcliffe and Bonnie Wright in these roles. But in practice, I think it'd be a little too jarring and kind of weird to see them on screen as these characters. I don't think we could disconnect them from the previous series and see them as anything but Harry and Ginny. In reality, it makes more sense to cast new actors. And it's important that they're actually younger than the rest of the Marauders, since Lily and James died in their 20s. I don't think it would feel right to cast actors who are actually 20 though. It'd be too much of a disconnect from the Marauders, so we're gonna go younger, but not too young. For James Potter, I believe Richard Madden would embody the role quite perfectly. He has a firm but soft persona to him, which really meets the character's requirements. It would give me the greatest pleasure if you would do me the honor of letting me lead you through this. The first. Dance. Yes, dance. <laughs> That's it. Now we know that James was reckless in his youth, but eventually matured to the man we see. And I feel like Madden has that steadiness of a man who's grown and has confidence in himself. In my opinion, he still looks very young, but grown up, which is important. And he's about seven years younger than some of the actors. But what really sells me on Richard Madden is how wonderful he is in the heartfelt moments. We see it time and time again in Game of Thrones, but it wasn't until I saw 1917 that I saw how much he can do on the screen with so little. His performance in just a couple minutes is amazing. So Richard Madden as James Potter. As for Lily, for once, the fan casting that has been adopted by the internet online is spot on. Honestly, I don't think I could do better even if I tried. Karen Gillian is great for the role of Lily, and I can't dispute that. Again, she is on the younger side and looks that way, if not younger. I think she would fit well with Richard Madden. In my opinion, they would make an amazing duo and have us all in tears whenever they're on screen. So Karen Gillian as Lily Potter. Lastly, I wanna tackle one last role. That's Professor Trelawney. She's first seen in Prisoner of Azkaban and plays a semi big role when it's revealed Harry has the grim. She teaches divination and she's over the top and wonderful. It's as if she lives on another world than these characters. She makes ridiculous predictions, which seem to be correct a lot of the time. And she is actually the one who predicted the return of Voldemort and Harry being marked as his equal and how one would defeat the other. So for Trelawney, Tilda Swinton is the only choice for such an out of the box kind of character. She's really a chameleon and I think she would get lost behind those glasses. She has a lot of opportunity with the role. This one is not limiting whatsoever and I'd be really interested where she takes the character. Like look at her in Snowpiercer. I belong on the head, you belong on the foot. Yes, so it is or Grand Budapest Hotel. I fear this may be the last time we ever see each other. Why on earth would that be the case? Well, I can't put it into words, but I feel it. Or even the Chronicles of Narnia series. What is your name, son of Adam? She plays everything different and makes it its own. She really transforms. She would be a joy to watch on screen as Trelawney. So Tilda Swinton as Professor Trelawney. So there's the new cast for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So let me know your choices. I'm hoping I didn't break too many hearts when it comes to the Marauders. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the next video in the series where I tackle Goblet of Fire. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Gabe Marchanda, Gunnar Legland, Colleen West, Marco Perry, Roland, Aiden McShane, Lon Hudson, Kieran Hunt, Joris Conan, Brandon Warner, Sweevy, Alex Tao, Derek B. Bell, Jacob Wolf, Jerome Florich, 
Alexander Gardulo, and Lisa Hewer. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.